when you take over any business, you just have to make sure that you're aligned with the people who are operating the business. And I think Tuchel is obviously extremely talented uh, and someone who had great success at Chelsea. Um, our vision for the club was finding a, a manager who really wanted to collaborate with us, a coach who really wanted to collaborate. You know, I think there's a lot of walls to break down at Chelsea. Uh, and, you know, before the first team, for example, in the academy, didn't really share data. Uh, didn't they, they didn't share information about, you know, where the top players were coming from. Uh, so our goal is to really bring, you know, a team together that, you know, with the academy, with the first team, with the incremental clubs that we want to acquire and develop, all of that needs to be, you know, a, a, a well-oiled machine. Uh, and the reality of uh, our decision was that we just weren't sure that Thomas saw it the same way we saw it. And no one's right or wrong. It was just we didn't have a shared vision for the future. And it wasn't about Zagreb. Uh, it was really about, you know, the shared vision for what we wanted to, to Chelsea Football Club to, to look like. Uh, and, you know, it wasn't a decision that was made, you know, as a result of a single win or loss. Uh, it was a decision that was made really about what, were, what we thought was the, the right vision for the club. You know, it obviously prohibits tanking. Right, so I think that you know you, you have no, because of course the economics of going into the first league are materially different. Right, I mean I think the Premier League distributes its media money, uh, and every club gets north of you know 200 million pounds or so from the media contract. And when you go into the next league down, the the, the Championship League, you know that numbers fall off a cliff. Right, so there's no one who's thinking about tanking. And those relegation games are some of the highest broadcast games. I mean, ultimately, I hope that the Premier League takes a little bit of a lesson from American sports and really starts to figure out, you know, why wouldn't we do a tournament, tournament you know, with the bottom four teams? Why isn't there an all-star game? I mean, people are talking about more money for the pyramid. You know, MLB did their all-star game in L.A. this year. We made $200 million dollars from, you know, a Monday and a Tuesday. You know, so, you know, I think you could do a North versus South, you know, all-star game for Premier League and fund whatever the pyramid needed very easily. I think we know people. We know human capital. And I think we understand game plans and strategies. And, yeah, we're not expecting to be, you know, the football experts to find the best talent. We're going to put those people in place. And I think it's no different than running any human capital business where it's all about getting the right resources, making them collaborate, getting them organized, thinking about, you know, how you have, you know, a global business uh, at a local level. So, you know, I think we're going to um, be continuously adding resources. You know, I think we've been talked about having a, a multi-club model. Uh, I would love to, you know, continue to build out the footprint. You know, I think that, you know, the, there's different countries where there's advantages to having a club. Um, you know, Red Bull does a really good job. They've got Leipzig and they've got Salzburg, and both of which are playing in, in Champions League. Uh, so, you know, they've figured out how to, to, to make that work. Uh, you have Man City, which has a, a very big network of clubs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I think... The, the challenge that Chelsea has right now, or one of them, is that, you know, when you have 18, 19, 20-year-old superstars, you know, you can loan them out to other clubs, but you put their development in someone else's hands, right? So I think that, you know, our goal is to make sure we can show pathways for our young superstars to get onto the Chelsea pitch while getting them real game time. And to me, the way to do that is through, you know, uh, you know, another club somewhere in a really competitive league in Europe. And because of Brexit, you also have to think about, okay, well, how am I going to get these uh, boys? And, and, and of course, we have the top women's club in the world too. Uh, but how are you going to get them into um, uh, Europe? You know, and, and so, or sorry, into England because of Brexit. So we need GBEs, which are basically basically points that you get for playing in different leagues and the more points you get, the more caps you play, the more national teams that you have, it's easier to immigrate. So our job is to figure out how to put that 
that, that platform together uh, so that we can get our 18, 19, 20 year olds, because we have one of the best academies in the world. So if you look at what our academy has developed, our academy is Mo Salah, Kevin De Bruyne, more recently, Tammy Abraham, Reese James, uh, Mason Mount, uh, Trevor Chalaba. We have 10 or 11 players right now uh, that are either on loan and controlled by us or uh, you know, uh, you know, we have the right to buy them back or they're playing for our team that came from our academy. So what we really need is a place to put our 18, 19, 20-year-olds uh, to develop them somewhere in Portugal or Belgium or somewhere like that uh, get them the, the points they need and also get them out of South America and into Portugal is a, is a perfect place, for example, we think. Um, and then to, to get them on the, on the pitch in Chelsea. Well, I think you, again, you figure out how to make the academy that is so top, uh, you know, work, collaborate with the, the, the first team. You show players the, the pathway. Mm -hmm. You teach them about how you're thinking about the future. Uh, you treat you know, your players of the academy uh, as you know, a academy product, not academy players. Uh, so I think you... you is Barcelona you, the example there? Yeah, La Masaya is, is a, an amazing... They've done an amazing job. Um, you know, and of course, you know, you, no one can own Barcelona or Real Madrid, right? Or Bayern Munich for that matter. So I think we think that Chelsea is probably you know, the, the, the biggest brand that one can own in sports worldwide. I think Champions League has a big component of that already, right? So you have the best clubs throughout Europe playing in the best competition. And so I think we believe very much that, you know, Champions League has a lot of that. And there's a reason if you win Champions League, you know, you make, you know, over 100 million euros, right? So, you know, you, you win the Masters and you make a couple million bucks. You win Champions League and you make over 100 million euros. Yeah, and I think you can do that in the summer and there's other ways to, to, to do that. Um, you know, and I, and I think that the passion that the fans have for the sport and for the sport as it is is so strong uh, that it's hard to envision, uh, you know, changing. <laughs> I never say hard notes. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I like to keep options alive. Uh, but, you know, obviously it's not, it's not something that we're talking about at all.